It's a beast! Have a look at the size of that! <laughs> this is all it is, just little thousand size spinning outfits. Beautiful finish on these things. And uh, it's a really shiny little reflective little lure. Little owners as well, and they're all super sharp. They just help with your hookup rate. In last week's video, I showed you how effective little lures can be when you're trolling for flathead. And uh, I took you through some of my favorites. This week, I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use and some of the conditions that I like. I'll show you the gear that I use to troll for flathead. So these little lures that I went through in last week's video, if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. There's a whole host of these tiny little profile lures that are just fantastic when you're chasing flathead on the, on the flats and down through the shallows. This morning I've got this Rapala X-Wrap Jack Deep on one of my rods and uh, I'll throw that out now. And on my other rod I've got one of these little Mega Bass. This is a, an X55, a shading X55 by Mega Bass. Take a look at the little profile on that. I just love that how small it is and then the very slender profile bibs just give it a really tight sharp action. So. Beautiful finish on these things, and uh, it's a really shiny little reflective little lure. And on a bright day like today, I think they're just really good. Real natural colours on a bright day like today is uh, the way to go for me for the most part. So the way that I like to fish it, you saw that I just cast out, and I've got these out set at a different spread, so they're sort of offset from each other. This one's a little bit closer, so if this one goes off, that means that I can fish this one, get a little bit tweaky with the retrieve and try and lure that fish back in if I miss it on the closest bait. I'm using my uh, iPilot up the front this morning. You can definitely use your outboard when you're trolling even around on the flat. Sometimes I'll be fishing and just using my outboard motor if I'm only using one rod. Um, or I might put one in a rod holder, but ideally what you want to be doing is holding the rod that you're using so you can get a really good technique. And the way that I like to fish these things is you get that little thumping action going in through the sand, you can feel the vibe through the tip of the rod, and then every now and then, every couple of metres, you just drop your rod tip back and let your little floating lure, most of these are floating lures, these little shad profiles, you just let it float back up, maybe half a foot or a foot off the bottom, and often if there's a flathead following it, that's when they'll grab it. So it's one of the key moves that I've got when I'm chasing flathead. You know, flathead are a great fish for chasing with lures, and often you can just get out and get a little bit lazy and throw your rods in a rod holder and uh, still get them that way. But for the most part, I'll angle my rods down or level with the water, have them offset, and then just drop my rod tip back and then bring it back into action as I'm going along. It's a little bit more active and I definitely think it helps with your catch rate. So the gear that I'm using, you can see here I've just got uh, like a little thousand size reels. They're not the high end reels that you might expect but just a little smooth drag on these little, this one's like an X-Sage and a Sienna by Shimano. And then just little estuary spin rods. They're nice and light. Uh, this is like a three to five kilo estuary that's a 6.6 six, and this is a Fluger Treon this is a seven foot I think it's a three to six kilo Fluger Treon and I'll use that longer rod if I'm casting little diving lures as well but uh, that's the way that I like to run these things and the softer tip rods just allow you to when you get onto a little flatty not pull pull the hooks on it when they go nuts and they're shaking their little head around if you've got two um, tippy a rod or too tight an action on your rod often you'll just pop the hooks on them so their little mouths are really soft and uh, for the most part you want a soft tip rod and really sharp chemically sharpened hooks and I, I usually will upgrade my hooks on all of my little trolling lures I, I think we've all sort of felt that flattered that comes and grabs our lures and head shakes and comes straight off and often that little head shake will just tear a little hole and they'll be able to get off the hooks. So chemically sharpened hooks, uh, a little floating diving lure, and a soft tip rod tends to keep them pinned a little bit better. Um, the gear that I'm running, so the line is generally about six to eight pound, and then I run like a fluorocarbon leader of about 
it's usually about eight or ten pound and if it's really bright like today is super bright you might go down to like a four pound fluorocarbon liter and you could go even longer than a meter meter and a half you might go out to three meters if you you know in really clear shallow conditions just to try and um, present that lure with a little bit you know more invisible line and you don't have that knot of the join sort of distracting from the lure as it's pulling through the water so uh, there's a couple of the a couple of the tips around the type of gear that you want to use light is definitely better more fun and i said about the smooth drag if you're chasing flathead on the flats they've, they've basically got nowhere to go that's going to snap you off so a nice smooth drag um, you, you might be able to tell here if i really rip into that my drag just starts to take off and that allows me to play the flathead more than fight it really you don't want to be fighting flathead into the boat um, they're so busy so quick and the head shakes are so fast that they can just pop themselves off really easily and uh, I think there's a lot of missed fish because of that just having a too heavy a drag you can play flathead in they'll present better in the boat once you get them and um, you just won't be popping off as many fish so there's, there's a big part of the game is once you've got it hooked is actually how to fish it and play it and get it in uh, you don't want to raise your rod tip up too high too early and get the little flatty up on the surface because as soon as they break the surface a lot of the time they'll shake and that's when they can soar through your light leader. So generally I'll sort of play the fish down and try and keep it under the surface before I net it or get my glove into it. Uh, some of the other gear that I carry, um, definitely gloves is probably the best way to go if you're handling especially those big fish that you're going to return to the water. These little grips are really good, just a small pair of grips if you're going to keep it. Um, a pair of pliers for unpinning the hooks and then just a little pair of cutters. And the reason I love these little cutters, little nail clippers, is because I'll go through a whole heap of lures. Like in a session, if I'm not getting fish pretty quickly and in steady numbers, it's, it's not really worth persisting if you're in the right spots. Um, and I'll go through those spots in a sec, but little things like that that are just almost see-through, transparent, um, like a little yabby pattern. These little UV things by Rapala, um, like this is a purple prawn UV colour, and then right up to your hot pinks and greens. Um, some of the best colours, I'd say, probably come out of those uh, lively lures with those micro mullets, little silvers and things for the real hot colours um, that throw out that presence in discoloured water as well. So, oh, you can see here, like I've literally, I'm dragging the prop because I've gone in that shallow. I don't really have a problem with going super shallow. Um, like I'm only in about a foot, foot and a half of water. I've just pulled it. You don't want to be dragging your prop, but um, it's n absolutely no issue in going in and trolling over a foot, foot and a half of water. The flathead get right up here on the high tide and that's where I like to chase them a lot of the time. I try to keep a low profile. I'm not standing up and trying to, you know, spook fish that might be up on these flats. But uh, yeah, I don't mind getting into these, into these shallows and chasing the fish that are up here feeding on yabbies and bait fish and chasing bait around. Um, for the most part, I'll try and hit the edges and that's nothing new in flathead fishing. That's probably the most effective way to get after them. Fish the edges and fish the weed beds and that sort of thing. I've dived and snorkeled and, and searched for flathead um, by swimming after them for, for years when I was a little fella and they're often just hanging around those little drop-off sections or those little tusks of weed and things like that's the best way to find them when you're snorkeling so um, makes sense to try and hit those spots. If it's getting frustrating you might even go to plastics um, if you're catching too much weed and you'll know from the vibe on your rod um, if, you, if you're catching weed or if you know, if you're going through a section on high tide near a mangrove, a mangrove line bank like this, high tide will pull up all the weed off the bank and the mangrove uh, seeds and everything, and you might start to catch them. It can get a little bit frustrating. So I just watch my line and uh, try to stay out of that line of debris that comes off, off the high tide and that water, water movement. One technique that I use when I'm trolling, if I'm getting good fish along a certain run, I'll just pull up and start casting. And so just stall the whole trolling thing for a little bit and if I'm running over a patch of fish time and again and getting fish, it's, it's a really good move just to pull up, start casting and uh, you can get more fish in that patch that way instead of having to keep returning and running your big loops with your trolls. Um, the other time that that's useful is on a glass out like this, like conditions have just fully glassed out now, there's very little water movement 
and um, I'm sort of a little bit concerned that I'm spooking fish by where I'm moving. So I've decided just, I've still got one out the back, but I've just got uh, a really light setup that I'm just throwing in and there's patchy weed area here that I can't get to with my trolling line. So if, you, if you're seeing those great little patchy areas where you know the floodies just get in and around and you're missing them on your run, you can just get a light setup like this, super long leader, and uh, throw into them and just work them along as you're, as you're fishing your other trolling rod or if your mate's in the boat, you can tag team and do it like that. So the other thing, it just gives you a sense of, if you do decide to stand up, you can have a look at where your profile is, look for your flatty lies and just make sure that you're in the right sort of spot for a little while. Um, and it just gives you a different approach as well. You know, a long day out trolling, you can break it up with a little bit of casting and um, sometimes it'll work out way better for you if you're throwing in hard up against those little weedy edges if the trolling gets a little bit slow. Probably that's one of the big things about using an eye pilot is that like I'm fishing, I'm fishing with two at the moment. If I've got my hand on the prop, then one has to go, like if I'm using the outboard, one has to go in a, in a rod holder. And I just like to have both hands on the rods like that, and then you can pick a line with the autopilot. You get your um, you get your north point set, and away you go. And so there's a lot less changing and chopping around, you know, and navigating as you'd have to do. Keep your hand on the prop as you're going with the outboard. Um, so there's a couple of points on on how I like to fish for flathead uh, when I'm trolling. Yeah, the big ones are just to try and get a smooth drag, not try and fight the fish too hard on the way in. And you should be able to get some good numbers. If you're hitting these weed bed edges and you know finding your places on Google Maps and, and looking for those really big expanses of flats so you can go out and hit heaps of water, you're gonna run into a lot of fish, especially with these tiny little lures. With conditions like this as well, you can see it's sort of really glassing out that can become, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Primarily, I like to sort of troll on an overcast overcast day when there's a little bit of disturbance on the surface of the water with a little bit of wind maybe. Um, and if it's a glass out like this, I'll go looking for that surface water disturbance from the tide or start to hug in closer to some of the structure. So hopefully there's some tips that can help you along. I tend to have these out about 25, 30 metres out the back and um, Usually that presents with a fair few flathead after a session and a feed. Um, if I'm handling the bigger ones, I'll look after them, try to just get a photo and get them back in the water, and I use a glove most of the time to support the fish. Uh, those bigger ones are really good for the system. If we, um, if we look after them, there'll be plenty of fish for the table um, with those smaller, you know, the sweeter flathead. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and I've got heaps more stuff coming over the next few weeks. If you liked um, the, the lure reviews that I've been doing, I've got more of those coming and uh, some big flathead stuff is coming as well. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video.